Your phone, it's on Mars. Kind of. Let me explain. In 2020, NASA launched a small autonomous helicopter to Mars, basically the astronautical equivalent of one of those cheap helicopter drones you get for Christmas and immediately drill it into the wall. Except this one didn't cost $8 at your local Dollar Tree, it costed $80 million out of your taxpayer money. Nicknamed lovingly Ginny, this helicopter set out to do helicopter things. Its only mission was to see if it could fly, be controlled, decent enough to be called successful, And to spice things up a bit, fly it some more while they were at it. Ginny weighs about four pounds with a fuselage about the size of a tissue box. Now, before you get out of my case, here's the part where the title and thumbnail come in. Ginny, also known as the Ingenuity Rover, had to figure out how to keep itself warm, make sure it's charged, and make sure it could sustain its blade and motor health. All of this had to be done autonomously, aka without a human ever touching it, unless absolutely necessary. This was like the second coming of the Wright brothers. It was a weird kind of territory that no one has ever been before, both in the flight sense and the actual planetary sense, because we've never put a fucking helicopter on Mars before. Post-recording brain food here, sorry to interrupt. If you want free shit, I'm giving away three months of Discord Nitro. All you have to do is drop your Twitter or Instagram handle in the comments. You don't have to be subscribed and I'll be sending it to someone random within 48 hours. Okay, back to the video. So what was powering this huge, massive technological advancement of the human race itself and mankind? A Snapdragon 801 chip. To put it simply, Snapdragon 801 was the brains used in a large number of phones like the Samsung Galaxy line, LG, OnePlus, etc. Now you might have noticed I said was, as in past tense. The reason I put that as past tense was because this processor was released a decade ago. To put that into perspective, a decade ago, people were doing the Harlem Shake as a trend on Vine. What does the fox say was on the radio? and Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was at the peak of its player count. That was a great year, I don't care who you are. But you get the point, this chip is old. It was powering phones like the Galaxy S5 and the OnePlus One. So I hear you asking, hey, why is this chip that isn't even suitable for our use as a cell phone user being used in an $80 million helicopter going to a different planet? There's three reasons actually. Power usage, air correction, and surprisingly, Computing power. Considering NASA engineers are pretty smart and we as YouTube enjoyers and me as a quote unquote creator, I am especially dumb. So I took to the internet to see if I could bridge the gap between NASA smart stuff and stuff that we can understand. What I ended up finding was this super niche forum talking about Ingenuity's technology in which one of the forum members named Jay Herleman says he spoke to the team that worked on NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, told him the following. Previously used, space-hardened processors were not fast enough to do the real-time sensor fusion and flight control, so they were forced to move on to a faster and the less proven Snapdragon platform. Huh? Now, I know that was a lot of information, but there's only four words out of that entire sentence you kind of need to retain. Space hardened and less proven. And honestly, now that I'm saying this out loud, you can just remember less proven. That's the big one. Something you need to realize is that if one component fails on this mission, the entire mission fails as a whole. There's no take backsies. There's no control Z. Once that component or device or <laughs> in this case, helicopter goes up into orbit, and if it fails right off the bat, there's no redos. That's it. For that reason, NASA prefers older technology. For example, the Perseverance rover that's on Mars right now, even with about being the size of a Tesla Model X, is powered by a rad 750 CPU. Now, you don't need to know what that means because honestly, I didn't know what it meant until I researched this video, but that's based off of a PowerPC 750 architecture introduced in 1997 to compete with Intel's Pentium 2. Did you hear what I just said? 1997, a rover that's the size of a car on another planet is being controlled by a processor that's older than most of my YouTube audience. It's also the year Biggie died. Rest in peace, big man. So it's energy efficient because it's old, naturally. So they wanted a newer version for more power, sure. What about the error correcting thing? The second reason. Well, it's hard to explain without getting into that. But basically, processors process everything your computer does. There's processors in your phone, in your tablets, in your computers. Basically, any kind of computer-ish device has a processor in it. Now, computer processors don't quite see thoughts and processes the way we do. 
they don't see yes or no. They see ones and zeros. And these are just big calculations in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes these calculations are not precise and they have errors in them. Now, an error to us might seem like a weird glitch and something we just brush off, but what if you have a dropped process or dropped calculation when you have a helicopter on Mars that is currently flying and it just drops this process? What do you think would happen? Uh, Whereas a regular processor would take a few milliseconds to correct this issue, by the time this is cleared, there's a delay from what we're telling it to do from Earth until it reaches Mars. There is a little bit of a delay there, and that's plenty of time for it to crash or do whatever something we don't want it to do. According to NASA's technical documentation, which is public and I'll put a link in the description, there are two parts of this Snapdragon 801 that basically mirror each other. So if one gets butterfingers and drops a process, the other one picks it up and takes over for it. What you end up getting is that you get a few millisecond of delay versus a several second delay because the CPUs are just transferring the processes to each other as opposed to one CPU trying to clear its issue and waiting for another response. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but those milliseconds are crucial for something that's airborne and something that has that kind of delay between planets. Now, pivoting away from the NASA thing for a minute, Remember how you clicked on this video and it was like about your phone? Well, like I said, the processors are in phones and specifically the Snapdragon 801 was in the Galaxy S5 and the OnePlus One model. So technically, yeah, your phone is on Mars, but it hasn't been a phone that you've had within the last 10 years or so. So I apologize for technically lying to you, but yes, a major component of a phone that you may have had is on Mars right now. With that being said, the video is now over, so you can go ahead and suck off the like button or whatever YouTube wants you to do. And remember to go outside, touch grass, and stay hungry.